G'day, and welcome back to the Weedy Garden again. You know, on the last video, Jeff came to visit, and uh, he gave me a bit of good advice. He said, Weedy, you gotta do a bit more chopping and dropping. So, on this video, I'm gonna give my food forest a makeover. When I, when I first started my food forest, I planted lots of trees, lots of fruit trees and lots of support trees. This is gonna be so happy to get in the ground. And you know, I thought, you beauty, job done. But, that was only the beginning. Having a food forest is like having a beard. If you let it go, it's gonna cover your whole body. So you gotta kinda keep on top of things. And Jeff was kind to tell me that I actually need to do a bit more chopping and dropping because these trees, these are the nitrogen fixes. I think I'll start with just taking this one out. If we just, there's a special method what you have to do is you warm your hands up a little bit like that. And then you've got to go while they're hot, while your hands are hot. Ah, oh, that's good. I think we need to do this a little bit. Ah, that's better. If you can't do that, or if you're not quite sure how that little trick works, then you can just get yourself some clippers and some trimmers and a little saw, and um, it'll do the job as well. See, this support tree is actually supporting this little Brazilian cherry tree. So if there's too much, if there's too much shade here, my little cherry tree is not going to not going to grow at all. So that's going to open up the sunlight into that. And I think what I'll do is I'll just take these little ones off the side so we get a bit of height on it. All right, little cherry tree. And um, I've put a bit of comfrey around the bottom. Okay, so that's given that area a bit of space as well. Let's go down and see if we can make some nice biological umbrellas. The bohemia is down here next to the custard apple. See, I remember Jeff was standing here telling me what I've got to do with this one. There's a lot of chop drop you can do in here. Yeah, as they Crazy. regrow, manage the regrowth so that nothing's on the lower stem and everything's coming from the top. Okay. And then you've got a more convenient chop every year. Oh, I see. Okay. And, and, you know, then we've got clear maintenance underneath. Okay. We'll get stuck into this bohemia now. So let me explain again why we have support trees. See, in the leaves, this green greenery here is nitrogen. Okay, so instead of going to buy nitrogen, I just put some nitrogen in the form of these leaves. So when you, when you chop a tree like right back, it's called coppice. You coppice the tree. Some trees can handle that and they'll just reshoot. So I could choose to go to the, um, the shop and buy wood chips and um, I could buy some nitrogen fertilizer and give it to my custard apple tree here. But instead, just growing a bohemia next to it. And that's all my nitrogen. And the, the bigger branches, they're going to get broken down by the fungus and basically turned into food. Zhunk. Okay, job done. Uh, time to dismember the pigeon pea. You wouldn't think that, would you? But that actually is mango tree food. You know, when I've been working in this food forest for a few more years, you, you'll see me and I'll have this huge big arm here from, and, and this little skinny arm here, because I'll be like doing this all the time. See, this is pigeon pea. And pigeon pea is called pigeon pea because the pigeons like to eat it. And we can eat them too. The thing is they're very labor intensive if you want to, see there's two little peas in that, see? Two little peas there. Well, that's nice and comfortable now. It's going to decompose nicely and um, it'll keep the moisture in underneath that little mango tree as well. And uh, I know that it's all organic. None of this has been sprayed. So I'm totally certain that my little mango tree is organic. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you just over here, see? See what's happened there? The bush turkeys have just demolished my cassava bed. I did put some of this wire to try and stop them from doing that. But as you can see, it hasn't really helped at all. So this one, I've got the sign here, the critters. I'm gonna get rid of all this cassava because it just attracts the bush turkeys. As soon as it's ready, they just eat it and they dig up everywhere to get at it. I'm not gonna have any of my swales anymore. So if you didn't know how to plant cassava, it's really, really easy. Basically just lay that down in the ground 
and it'll shoot new cassava shoots up from here and it'll set its roots out here and here and that becomes the cassava root you eat I will put this here because the cows do like it I'm gonna just keep a little bit of this cassava and I'm gonna plant it in a pot and then I can at least have a bit of cassava because I really like cassava pancakes I'm getting to my wits end with the bush turkeys everybody I've tried so many different things Ow! Ow, that was a jumping ant. Ow, ow, ow. Ow! Beautiful looking earthworms down here. Nice feisty little one there. Oh! Okay. Okay, moving right along. Trying to mimic the, um, the, the wind and that. Go down into the forest to where it's a bit foresty. I'm going to plant a couple more trees down there as well. I've got a barker here and a little mulberry that have got roots now, so I'll put them down. Okay, this little spot here is a good enough spot for my mulberry tree between my pear and my pomegranate. Nice little roots developing there. So nice and gently. Now go and put a little bit of mulch around that I think as well. I've got my babaco, which I'm gonna put down here in the hugel culture bed. Dig a bit of, bit of a hole here, loosen a bit of the soil. And then I'll chuck my babaco down here. Oh, look at those beautiful roots. Beautiful, that's gonna be happy there. I'm gonna just go and get the watering can and give that a little water. And a little pruning here, and a little pruning there. And a little pruning here, and a little pruning there. See, in the beginning, I tried to chop the banana pups, but they just kept growing up. Instead of trying to kill the banana pups, I actually use them now and harvest them as my little potassium factory. You can see I put them back on top of the banana pile. Or I put them in a new bed here. And that'll break down and that'll give that bed potassium as it breaks down. Nice little cluster of bananas up there. They're the Thai dwarf bananas. Nice and low, so they're easy to harvest. But getting back to the potassium factory, I just basically just keep chopping these off and and feeding it back to the mother plants because it's just potassium. I can also feed it to the worms and also I can make a whole banana compost with only banana cuttings, potassium soil, which is good for flowering, which is good for fruiting, and which is good for root vegetables. Always keep one grandmother who's fruiting and then another one here, which is gonna, this one here, which is gonna flower soon. And then this one here, and then a little one here. And you see how, notice that it's the little, the little thin leaves ones that you keep. They're the ones you want to keep. Okay, you can see the difference here between this one. See how wide the leaves are compared to this one. See how it's got thinner leaves. And these ones we are, over here, we call these the water leaves. These are the ones we want to keep to let grow big. See, these ones with the thinner leaves. See, this little macadamia tree is not really happy for all this growth, just sitting over it like that, so we're going to take it all away, open up the sky. Thank you. 
timber. There's a lot of trimming to do here, but it's really just a matter of getting into it. Starting at one spot. Once I get this done properly, I won't have to trim it so much because we'll have this big biological umbrella. Because if I walk around the swales now, I have to bend and, and duck and swerve and weave all, all over the place. So it makes a lot of sense to just keep them up high so I can walk around underneath and just let them grow up so they're doing their job as shade trees. All these elements that this tree has been collecting from the air and from the sun and from the soil, all been collected as this tree has been composing itself and growing. And now we're chopping it up and putting it underneath. It's now going to decompose and all those elements are going to be released again in the soil, even more than they were before because of the sun and the air. So we've got the second last tree I can see, and this is the acacia decurrence. And like Jeff was saying, I should only take about one third off. So I'll do that. And I'll feed the avocado tree underneath it. A human wood chipper continues. It's always good to have a little bit of Himalayan salt in your water. So when you're sweating so much, you don't lose all that salt in your body. You don't cramp up. A little bit of Himalayan salt. Ice cream bean. I do have an ice cream bean down there where all the teddy bears are hanging. And that's going to be a huge big tree. And I'm thinking, you know, when the ice cream bean actually does come on, that I'll have so many ice cream beans that I won't be able to eat them all. So I only really need one ice cream bean. And my idea with this garden is I've got all the diversity and all the different fruits growing. And I can take a nibble here and a nibble there and always have this diversity. So if I had, you know, two ice cream beans, I've got too many ice cream beans. So this one's going to go. Timber! Yeah, that's it. And uh, we'll just have to chop this one up now. And who, who wants to eat this one? I think I'll give it to the mulberry. Alrighty, time to chop this one down. And that's this one here. This little one here. <laughs> Timber! Job's not quite finished yet. Now I've got to just chop this up. I think this is the last tree in the food forest that I've got to tend to, and it's my white sapote. It's just growing all crooked and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl up here. I'm going to try and chop it up in the middle. Here we go, timber. I think while I'm here, what I'll do is I'll tie it, I'll tie it back to the chicken house, and I'll do that with a little bit of pipe because I don't want to cut it with this string. The string's going to be a little bit too sharp on it because there's a lot of weight pulling it. I just chop off a little bit of this hose like that with my nice secateurs. Thread this string through here until it comes out the other end like that. See, and then I can put it around. That's going to be a lot more gentle on the tree. So I'll try and crawl up again. Look at that, a little lasso. Yeehaw! Okay, see that looks a lot better. Nice and symmetrical now. And also reachable. I can just reach up and grab those fruit with my hands now. Another thing I noticed as I'm walking past is my little dragon fruit flower. You see, I'm keeping my eye on these because any day now they're going to open up. And they only open up for 24 hours. So when they do open up at night time, I come up with my little brush and I just have to give them a little wiggle inside and that'll pollinate them. And then we get little dragon fruits from our dragon fruit. But these ones here are gonna be nice to eat soon. Another thing I'm gonna do down in the swales is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna transplant my comfrey because um, I've got it growing here in, in the garden beds, but my garden beds are so valuable that I'd rather put this down in the swales. It gives it a bit more greenery and it'll control the weeds in the swales as well. It's 
So the plant is flowering now, or it's going to bud, as they call it, and it's time to give it some more potassium. And as I've got lots of comfrey growing, right beside it, I'm going to put all these comfrey leaves on top now, and they'll decompose. Comfrey leaves also have phosphorus and nitrogen. So I'm trying to grow this plant only using natural means. I'm not using any, any fertilizers that I'm not making up in the garden here. And it's looking really nice. That's why comfrey is really good for the garden. This is nice. It's all decomposed now. And uh, give this hemp plant a lot of nutrients. So I'm going to now dig up this comfrey and put it down in my swales and make a bit more room for my vegetables up here in my garden bed because the bush turkeys, they're not going to dig up the comfrey. So I can pull this whole root system up here. See, it just spreads. It's quite, as they say, quite deep, deep rooted. You can hear all those roots crunching as I lift it up. There's a big spider, a huge big spider there. See, in here I've probably got 10 or 15 different ones. See, if I pull these off like that, and each one's got some roots already going. So I can plant those, fill up the spaces down in the swales. And the comfrey that's going to spread quite a lot, so I'll have plenty of comfrey down there, which is really nice for the soil. And I'll put the rest of the comfrey that I've got here underneath my tamarillo. There's a few falling off the tree here, I can see. That means they're ready, like this one. See? Yeah, I can see that beautiful tamarillo. Mm. and then pull that down so I can dig in here nice and deep and then See, this is all bushing up here, so I want to just take all these down so I leave this top canopy here. See, just like that. It's a lot easier getting these off when they're nice and small and green. So I just take all these little ones off here. See, now I've got my little biological umbrella. I got a nice rock melon, papaya. Doesn't look beautiful and, and shiny like they do in the shops, but I can tell you it's gonna taste delicious. And got a little sugar baby watermelon, I'll sit that there. Passion fruit. And another passion fruit, I'll save that one for next time. And then I got a lime to give that, that little bit of twang and a little bit of color and a little bit of taste as well as some nasturtium flowers. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna chop all this up and eat it right now in front of you all. I'm gonna save the little flowers for later, I'll put them on later. I've gotta get myself a little bit organized here. And I've got some nice honey as well from the hives. Look at that. Give you that 3D sensation. Mmm, yummy. Oh look. It's a little yellow watermelon, is it? Yeah, look. It's the watermelon, and then we've got the passion fruit. Mmm, look at that. It's beautiful. Mmm. And I'm gonna enjoy my beautiful fruit salad. Beautiful orange one today. They're all different up here in the weedy garden. Every day is different, every time of year is different, so you never know what colour the fruit salad is going to be like. 
Mm. But they all taste delicious because they're all homegrown and they're all organic. So I know that eating this, I'm closer to reaching my own full potential. And that's what it's all about, isn't it, really? And I just want to say thanks for coming and um, being in the garden with me while I'm doing the chopping and dropping and listening to the, the rantings and ravings of the Weedy Garden Adventures and so on. Uh, I really appreciate you watching the channel. And I'm glad that there's some people out there that appreciate how beautiful this is and that one day you'll be able to do it yourself. It's not about getting to the end result, it's about enjoying the journey along the way. Mm. That's the most important thing. Have a nice day, everybody. Thanks for watching.